Hey everybody, Jim Chester here, Cairo Fest 2019. This place is off the hook. I have uh, Dr. Brad Elliser up here. He's the only chiropractor in his little town up there, Tenino, Washington. But uh, I was like, man, you're the only crazy chiropractor out there. And he goes, no, I'm the only chiropractor there. So um, just jumping into this, uh, thank you to uh, being my guest today and thank you for being here with me. I know that we've known each other uh, at close and at distance for, uh, I don't know, five years now. Yeah, something like that. It's been a while for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so... Cairo Fest, what brought you up here, ma'am? Um, well, I, I love supporting the local Northwest uh, event, uh, chiropractic event for sure. So I've been here, well, I don't know, this is probably my fifth or sixth time making it here. I try to get it here every year. I've had a couple things in the middle, so I've missed a few of them. But I love to just get, uh, get in the community with the people from the Northwest, the people that come up here and share, get some new, new inspiration, some new ideas, and... Uh, so it's just fun. It's a fun time. I get to see people like yourself who, I, you know, I don't get to see all the time in person. So I yeah, love it. And you, actually, Brad was like probably the second or third person I saw when I showed up today. I had my hands full of gears and a backpack on and I just ran over and gave you a big hug. Yeah. So it felt like I was coming back home. Anytime I come back to the Pacific Northwest, I want to make sure I'm here at Cairo Fest. I want to make sure I'm supporting this beautiful profession of chiropractic. And I want to make sure I'm uh, connecting and building fellowship and doing these interviews because without these interviews, we don't get a chance to let this event live outside the four walls of this event. And so many people don't even know about what's happening in chiropractic. They don't know if so go to the Cairo Fest website and just look at the powerhouse that uh, Dr. Paul brings up to the stage and brings out to this this group of people up here in Vancouver, uh, Washington. But let's let's talk a little bit more about what we were discussing off camera, and that's like generational chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And and why are you so why are you so like going after educating the younger generation about what chiropractic is and living a chiropractic lifestyle? Well, you know, it's interesting because I never really intended to practice in a small town like I do. Um, I love living near there, but I was, you know, it's not too far from Olympia and then even not that far from some other bigger areas. But this is sort of what ended up happening through a number of circumstances, you know, some in my control, some outside in the last seven years. And so, but what's cool is that since I'm the only chiropractor in town, I see everybody. I have three generations. And one day we counted, we had one family where I was seeing five generations of them in my practice. Um, and it's like such an opportunity to see those changes over time. And so I think that that's really where it started. And I found that, uh, you know, in the education and in events like this, there's a lot of, um, conversation about taking care of kids, which, you know, really resonated with me, especially once I have my own kids, I have three of them now, um, because, you know, the, obviously they're our future and, and those type of things. But what I also found, which was a total surprise was I loved also taking care of uh, the elderly too. And there's a lot of older people in the town I practice in. And so it's really fun to be like multi-generational, like you mentioned, and see the grandparents, the parents, the children, see them you know, through now that I've been there seven years, I'm starting to see people you know, who, teenagers becoming you know, adults, starting their own families and things like that. Um, and I think just being a parent and trying to figure it all out myself, you know, even though I, I was a chiropractor before I ever had kids, and you know interest in health and all these things it's like once you have this little person to take care of uh completely you know they're relying on you you know you and your, your spouse or who you know whoever you're parenting with it's like it becomes much more real and so i just spent so much time and attention trying to learn how to do it as best i could with my own kids and then had other people asking me you know people in my practice like oh you know how do you how do you feed your kids right? How, there's so much information out there. How do you get them to eat healthy and all these type of things? And it was really, honestly, a question that a patient asked me. It was literally that. Hey, how do you get your kids to eat healthy? She'd never even met my kids before, so she just assumed that I did. That sparked my whole interest that led to me creating the uh, podcast, the Kids Eating Broccoli podcast, um, to be able to share that. And honestly, you know, the best part about it, and you probably are learning this doing a lot of these interviews, is... You learn so much just by interviewing other people. So I was like, this is perfect because I get to get on, on the, the mostly, you know, Internet with all these experts and uh, about parenting and healthy kids and, and ask them my questions, you know. So you may notice a certain theme of some of the questions through the different interviews if you watch them. Uh, but, you know, and then I've implemented the things. And so, you know, it's been great. It's been great. 
So if you guys are watching this and you're finding value in this, hashtag value in the comments. If you think that there's some things that we're sharing here that you love, just hit that love button there. And please share this with your channels because the more people that see what Dr. Brad is doing in his message, we're going to make a better, more beautiful profession of chiropractic. And that's the impetus of what we do with Cairo Hustle is we've been able to tear down these walls of confusion, living small, small bands of people not supporting each other. And what we've been able to do is we've been able to bring the leaders of this profession together and to really amplify this message of chiropractic. So if you guys love what we do, hit that love button, just smash that love button and please share this for us too. But uh, Dr. Brad did something really awesome and I was watching him from a distance do this. He created the podcast, Kids Eating Broccoli. And what he realized is that he had to start living outside the four walls of his brick and mortar if he really wanted to make an impact on a larger scale. So I know you also helped produce a, a documentary recently. Um, it's been about a year and a half, but let's talk a little bit about what it means to like create something and leave a digital footprint that's bigger than you and your brick and mortar. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that because of the time we live in, obviously, you know, like what we're doing right now, right? We're, just, we're, we're looking at a phone, right? But, but we're looking at the world also. And so we have such a great potential to be able to reach so many people and not, you know, not like, I don't know how to say it, but the digital footprint, that's a perfect way to say it, actually, to be able to, to, to give value on this type of format and then have it there for people to find down the road. You know, I get messages sometimes from people who were impacted by a podcast interview I did, you know, two years ago and, and it's, and it, they just heard it last week and, and they got something out of it. So it's such an uh, opportunity that, you know, it's, I look at it. I mean, I don't know about the rest of you guys, you got to decide for yourself, but I, for me personally, I look at it like it's my responsibility in doing the things I'm doing with, you know, each individual person to be also to try to share that with as many people as who would find value in it. You know, it's like you, if you know something and have something to give, then, you know, you want to give it in the best ways you can. So we live in such an amazing time that our little cell phones can broadcast to the world. So we should be doing it. And, uh, and definitely I, I appreciate so much, you know, watching you over these years of that I've known you and watched you online to, I mean, I was looking forward. I knew you were going to be here. We had chatted on Facebook or some, somehow I knew you were going to be here. And I was like, oh, that's so great to see, you know, Jim do these interviews with everybody because, like, what a great way for people who aren't here to be able to be part of it and to leave that footprint. So, you know, I am here and I can't sit there and watch because I'm in there listening to the speakers, but I can go on Facebook later and, and catch out, you know, all the value that you you know, you bring out of the different people. So well, I awesome. appreciate you saying that, man. And as I've done this over time with time and repetition, we become masters. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've watched back the five years of my progression of thinking that I knew the right message because I did at that point, mm -hmm. I knew exactly what I thought people needed to know. But now what I've realized is that with consistency and craftsmanship and building this relationship and building this family and chiropractic, now I understand that there's a bigger message and it's not so much my message anymore. It's your message. Mm -hmm. It's Pete's message. It's Paul's message. It's, it's our, it's our greater family. It's Monica's message. It's all these people that we have access to that people out there need need what we're doing. A lot of times, as you said, the people that are at these events, they'll come up to me and they'll say, thank you. Thank you for documenting the profession. Yeah. Thank you for pushing forward and meeting the people where they are and asking them those questions and sharing this because maybe I was injured and I couldn't make it to this event. Right. So I sat home and I felt like I was a part of the family because you did these interviews oh, yeah. and I didn't feel like I had to be there. If you need CEs, get here. <laughs> and if you wanted to see like the, the, the heartbeat of this culture, you should be here. And I think that that's one of the things that we talk about too, is the culture of chiropractic, the lifestyle, the four dimensional lifestyle, mm -hmm. the generational idea of chiropractic, but also living outside of our four walls, which are brick and mortar and creating this digital footprint that other people can learn from two years, five years, 10 years. And the information is so rich and so ripe. You guys just have to tune into it. Totally. Totally. Yeah. What very well said. <laughs> and, and I was just thinking when you were saying, looking back on your uh, career of the five years of this growth, I just, just flashed to some of the early Facebook videos I did and, and thinking like, Oh my gosh, you know, like how did even anybody watch this stuff, right? You know, because I thought like I, I was doing my best at the time, but you know, you learn from doing it. And that's something that I hear from other, you know, chiropractors or other people who want to get their message out, but they're like, oh, you know, I can't do the Facebook lives. I can't get on the camera. And it's like, I couldn't either. 
I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched your early stuff, but I imagine it was a lot more, you know, bland or dry or, you know, less engaging. But that's how we do it. We just get out there and we start sharing from like what our message is and from our, you know, what's real for us. And you get better at it. Yeah. And early on, as I saw Brad doing his thing, I was always encouraging. I was always present. I was always watching. I was always tuning in. I was always saying, hey, man, good job. And that's the thing that we need when we start stepping out of our comfort zone is we need other people of like mind. We call them like and kind to jump in and then support support each other because we're only as strong as a team. And uh, I'll just give a quick analogy. There's these two draft horses you've heard this probably mm-hmm. where one draft horse can carry 20 or seven tons and another draft horse by itself can carry another seven tons and that equals 14 tons but if you put two of us together and we're equally yoked we can carry 28 tons or 21 tons i don't know the exact things i'm not a mathlete but we can equiv- equivocally carry a third more when we move together So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're carrying weight together, but we carry momentum, we carry energy, we carry fellowship, we carry friendship, we carry support. And the more that you give, the more that you get. So Brad, I just want to say thank you for being on with me today. Thank you for uh, jumping on impromptu, uh, Cairo Hustle style. And I want to thank Local Gold for co-branding with me today. And if you guys need any web or marketing presence on the chiropractic scene, reach out to Natalie at Local Gold. But I'm I'm going to go ahead and close out. Is that okay? Yeah, great. Thanks so, Paul Reed, thank you for bringing us all together here this weekend out here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to say you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. We'll see you guys on the next interview. Love and appreciate you guys.